So the materials that you should have in your T2 pack are the larger piece of nat. This is 60 denier nat. So you should have five meters of that. So it's a stronger nat. Then there's a 40 denier nat, which just sort of goes in the middle layers. And then some tulle, which goes around the leg. So you've got three different weights of net on your tutu plate. So as it comes into the legs, it gets softer so it doesn't scratch your performer's legs. So there are your three nets. Then you have some cotton drill. This is what you'd make your basque from. And cotton bobbin net, which is what you make your knickers from. So this is very expensive. So don't lose it because it's like 25 quid a meter. Um, and you have one inch Peter Shum for your waistband. So these three, the, cotton, the waistband, the cotton bobbin net, and the drill, they all need to be pre-washed. So if you wash them on a warm wash and just let them air dry and press them really well, especially the bobbin net, press that really well. You might need a little bit of elbow grease pressing it to restretch it back out. It'll shrink quite a lot, that one. And washing the waistband softens it so it's not so crispy and uh, hard against your performer's waist. Then you'll also have some half inch bias binding for around your legs on your knickers. Some quarter inch elastic for your legs also. Um, one inch elastic, this goes in your waistband. And a quarter inch India tape, this is for the hanging loops on your tutu. Um, and some five millimeter crin steel, so you got 1.8 meters of that. So that goes into the tutu plate once you've made it and it supports it. And also you have some fastenings. We've got some, these are corset hooks or tutu hooks, same thing and some hooks and bars. So I advise you keep these in your envelope, keep it sealed until you actually need them because you'll end up losing them otherwise. So that's what you should have in your pack. So explaining all the labels for you. So I broke all the information down to each layer that is on your tutu. And each one of these holds all the information for the layer. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then this is the leg ruffle. And this is the channel that will be on the seventh layer. So if you look at the information on the labels, this one is layer 10. The length of it is 16 inches. And the widths, how many widths you want. So you're going to cut the width of your fabric. You want two and a half widths. In this case, our net is three meters wide. So you will cut two and a half of them. So you'll cut out three 16 inch layers. Six, sorry, 16 inch lengths. So three widths, and then you will discard half a width, and that will give you the amount that you need. And then it says for it, whether you're scalloping it or dagging it, you will use the pattern, and on the pattern it has large, medium, and small. So for this one, you're going to use the large pattern. And this layer is facing down on the tutu and it's made of the 60 denier, which is the heavier of the net. 
and it's sewn onto the eleventh line. And if you go to the next one, layer nine, you can see it's a little bit shorter. It's fourteen and a half inches in length, and you want two twenty-five width. So you're going to cut. You can cut two of them and then use your excess from the previous one for the 25 so you're not wasting any um, net so I'll do a little demonstration and show you that and your scallop again the size of the pattern for the edge is a large one and this layer is also facing down it's also in 60 denier and it's sewn onto the tenth line so you just keep going. So if you look, so all of these, cut them out and pin them with a safety pin to your layers once you've cut them out so you know which is which because it has all the information for you. If you look down on this little chart that I've done for you, it's telling you all the, the amounts that you have. So the row or the layer is one to 10 and you can see that the depth the length of each one or depth is this is the one i've just showed you 16 inches and number nine was 14 and a half and how many widths you need of each one so i've done all the maths for you and i've also shown you what to use with your excess so on layer 10 we had a um half of a width extra so that half width that is left can be used for the quarter of layer nine. So you're not wasting any. And same on seven and six, it tells you what to use the excess from previous ones for. So it keeps your wastage down. Yeah, so you cut all them out, pin them all to it. And that's all your information. So you've got your net. I'm going to do this in a little miniature version because I don't have the room and the equipment to do it with the full size net. So let's pretend this is your net. So this is your net folded up. This is the, the length of your net. And this is the width. So you got your net and you had your our labels. So we're going to go, let's pretend we're doing the first one. Pretend I'm cutting 16 inches. So first thing I want to do is I want to square the end off. The, bottom, the end of my net off. So using a square and I would make sure the ends all squared off first before I started. So using my rotary blade I'll cut the first bits off. And I would pin, use these glass headed pins, so if you use the ones without the little ones you'll just lose them in the net. And then I would measure down my 16 inches, so let's just say let's do it 16 centimeters instead, so pretend this is 16 inches. I measure down and again squaring I could do it this way squaring off yeah And again, using my rotary blade, cut and just pin. 
pin the ends down. You can pin them before. It's easier on the bigger, when you've got the bigger sizes, the proper size of net, if you pin it before you cut. So pin, so, so your net's not shifting on you. And then I would cut the next 16 and then the third one. Because on your label it says cut two and a half widths. So you've cut your 16 inches out, your depth. And you've cut three of these. So your label is only calling for two and a half widths. So we cut three out. And on the third one, if you open this up, and you just want half. So I would just cut along in half and just keep half of it and the other half I can keep for the next label which is number nine it's calling for two and a quarter widths so I would cut two widths in at 14 and a half inches and then I would use the excess from this for that other quarter so I can cut it down to 14 and a half then and just use a quarter so it would be you can see the creases it's creased in quarters so I would just use one quarter there so cutting it down to the 14 and use that quarter and then pin it pin all them sections together so keep all your sections together with your labels on it so it's worth blowing this page up and cut the labels out and pin them to your net. Use a safety pin to pin them to the net because if you just put it with pins and then when you pack them away out of the way, you lose the labels and, and then you have to start measuring everything to figure out what it is. So use a safety pin to pin your labels to your net. So once you've cut all your widths out of your nets, you're going to join all these widths together. So open them up. And what you're going to do is just lay one on top of the other. And then you're going to just do it a straight stitch on your sewing machine. So I've, I've overlapped, I've just laid the one edge over top of the other, I've overlapped it and I've top stitched it and I've, I've top stitched this with the um, coloured thread so you can see it. Use a white cotton thread. Make sure it's cotton because you can spray into these or you can dip them and dye them after the fact. So once you've made up your tutu, you can spray with Maggi spray, you know, to get an ombre effect or you can dip it, dip dye it. If you use um, polyester thread, sometimes they won't take the dye very well. It'll be a bit lighter and a bit more. You won't get a true colour, so use cotton thread. So once you've joined all your widths together, on all your layers then go back and start quartering them so you need to thread mark them in quarters so that you can distribute the net evenly along the knickers so if you find the middle of your width first and pop a thread on and then fold it's folded in half then fold it in half again so you get the quarters and do a thread mark and on the other side. So how you do the thread mark, just use a big needle with some double thread in. Put it in and just tie it a little knot so you're making, so it won't slip out. Let's trim it so you've got a little tuft of colored thread. So you can see definitely where your quarters are yeah
yeah. So that's prepping it ready to gather it. On your, if you go back to your recipe, if you go back to your recipe, if you look at row seven, you put in a one inch channel, which is where your crin steel, the hoop will be inserted. So you've cut out a one inch channel and that needs to be sewn in the middle of layer seven. At this point, so pop it in the middle and just top stitch either side with the machine so you've left a channel. Do that before you go on to the next step of gathering. Don't forget to do that because you won't be able to, once it's gathered, you won't be able to put it on. So if you look at your handouts, I think there's a pattern for the edges of your net so you can either scallop them or you can dag them so this pattern is for dagging and if you look you have large dags medium ones and small and same with the scalloped edges so large scallops medium small so if you get yourself some cereal card and paste these patterns to the card, so like you, you know your Kellogg's box or corn or um, Rice Krispies is the perfect weight. So cut these out the strips, glue it to the, to it, let it dry, and then cut it out through the card, and then you can just go along the edges once you've cut all your lengths you layers a net and with a pencil draw the shape so refer back to your labels what size it says on your labels it'll be either large medium or small so you can do that your choice which you would like to do dags or scallops So to dag or scallop your edges, I've took the patterns that I showed you previously and I've glued them with a Pritt stick to some cereal cards. So this is a Rice Krispie box. It's a really nice weight. It's not too heavy, not too light. And then just cut it out through the, two, the paper and the card. And then referring to your labels, what size of dags you want, lay it on, use a pencil, draw your pattern on it, and then you can come along with your scissors, I'm just showing you on part of this, so and trim them out so use your tips don't go up like this and then you slip and go too far just use the tip of your scissors like that coming to the points yeah doing the um, points is a little bit easier than doing the scallops scallops take a little bit more time but they both look really nice the scallops look like chrysanthemum I always think but I, pr I prefer the dags myself so gathering your your net you're just gonna just push them up and pleat them freehand and so You could use scissors and just push it under and 
stitch. I just like to use my hand. So it's You can see you're gathering them up. So where you where your little tufts are, your quarters, you need to make sure you get on your knickers if you measure that distance on your knickers and just give yourself a little bit of ease. So if it's three inches, do it three and a bit. And then if it's too long, when you come to attach it to the knickers, you can just throw an extra little pleat in there to make it fit. And same the other way you can if it's a little bit short just undo a little bit and release one of the little pleats so you've gathered so you can see where your your first quarter is the tuft there so the distance that you're measuring that you're gathering it to you need to make sure on your knickers that you you've got the quarters so you divided this into quarters so this is the center back to the side seam side seam to the center front and same on the other side so where you've quartered your net you need to fit them into them areas so you'd need to measure that area so say that's so that's about five six inches you would make that first quarter the five or six inches plus a little bit just give it some ease and then if it does if it if it's too long you can just add another pleat to make it fit and if it's too short you can just where you've got a few close together just undo it a little bit and, and let it out to make it fit also before you um, attach your frills to your knickers if you trim this down so you've got a nice even so do it to about one to point zero seven so just go along and trim it so you've got a nice clean line for when you add it onto your knickers because you're going to be adding them on the lines and you can see there's not that much room in between so trim them all down and there's lots of ways of gathering that's just one method that we that's what we're going to use you can gather them on threads you could gather them on a cord you can, so you can do um knife pleats or box pleats there's lots of different ways so once you've You've dagged them all, you've scalloped them, you pleated them up, you trimmed them down. Then you can roll them up like that and make them into bundles with your labels on them and put them in your bag till you're ready to use them. These ones have been scalloped. These ones have been done with a different pleat as well. This is a two way pleat. This one's a three-way pleat, but these are more advanced ways of pleating. For your first attempt at a 2-2 two -two plate, we're just doing it simple by just push pleating underneath freehand. So next session will be making the knickers and attaching the frills to the knickers. Yeah.